people with Crohn's disease and found that many of them were able to stop using steroids and stop using other medications that they had taken for their Crohn's, that they had uh, less diarrhea, they had less abdominal pain. It was a true miracle for them. Uh, there's a, a list here of conditions that was originally developed by Dr. Todd McCurea, who was a pioneer in terms of medical marijuana. He actually worked for the National Institute of Mental Health and his job was to give out uh, grants for doing studies on cannabis. Uh, he thought he was there to find out how cannabis was useful to treat medical conditions. Uh, NIMH thought he was there to hand out grants to see how dangerous it was. Uh, this was a marriage made in hell and uh, he did not stay with the National Institute of Mental Health uh, for very long. Uh, cannabis is seen as a a neuroprotective agent and we have found that it has provided benefits for people with multiple sclerosis. It certainly treats their neuropathic pain and their muscle spasm, but more importantly, people who were placed on Sativex, the tincture of cannabis, uh, in early studies in Great Britain have remained on it for years and years and rather than progress, their multiple sclerosis has stayed the same, suggesting uh, that cannabis may not only be effective in reducing the symptoms, but also in slowing the progression of disease. It's helpful in dealing with the anxiety of people that have Alzheimer's disease. It's helpful in dealing with the muscle spasms that are associated with Parkinson's disease. When it comes to psychological illnesses, cannabis is useful in not only treating depression, which I already mentioned, but also bipolar disorder, which is depression and mania. It's useful in treating attention deficit disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, there was a study done at the Max Planck Institute in Germany a few years back that demonstrated it was useful in uh, reducing fearful memories, so that might suggest why it uh, is useful in alleviating PTSD. This is extremely important at this time when we have uh, so many people who are serving multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. The Pentagon has projected that at least a third of these people, and I think that that is a very conservative estimate, uh, will come back uh, with the symptoms of PTSD. As a matter of fact, in regards to PTSD, uh, both the Israeli government and the Croatian government have given their troops uh, cannabis for treatment of, um, of PTSD. The list just goes on and on. Um, many, many conditions cause uh, pain, serious conditions, uh, ankylosing spondylitis, which can actually turn you over, turn, make you bend over in a crippled position. People who have failed uh, back surgery, uh, people who have uh, herniated discs, uh, people who have chronic dislocated shoulders. All of these people get uh, relief from cannabis and they find that the cannabis provides that relief with fewer side effects uh, than uh, the opiates do. Uh, another thing that uh, is sort of counterintuitive where cannabis is useful is in the treatment of asthma. Uh, you may have seen the ads for Advair that say it's both a bronchodilator and an anti-inflammatory. Well, so too is cannabis. This is why there were numerous uh, marijuana cigarettes on the market in the 1920s for the treatment of asthma, specifically for uh, the treatment of asthma. So, as I pointed out by holding up this list, the list of uh, conditions for which cannabis is useful is extremely lengthy. That's a, a quick overview of some of the conditions that cannabis uh, is useful in treating. Most people tend to take cannabis at least in the evening. Some people take it more often than that. And the reason is that many of these conditions interfere with sleep and then there are some people who just have sleep problems, have insomnia difficulty, and cannabis is very useful in assisting people in going to sleep. Now, if they have difficulty staying asleep, in addition to smoking or vaporizing or using it sublingually, they should also use it as an edible or drink it because it will kick in 45 minutes into their sleep uh, and it will be effective for about five to six hours. There are a number of different 
ways of administering cannabis, of getting it into the body. Smoking and vaporizing cause the chemicals to get into the body upstream of the liver. So you have unmetabolized cannabinoids that are going to the brain. Now, this doesn't mean that when the cannabinoids go through the liver that they are inactivated, but it means that they're different. 85% of the cannabinoid is metabolized on its first pass through the liver. The other thing is that when it goes to the brain immediately by the respiratory route of administration, the effect will be in 15 to 30 seconds. Whereas if we wait for it to go through the GI tract and through the liver, it will take 45 minutes before it's effective. Now, each one of those routes of administration is going to give you a slightly different mix of chemicals because when you smoke it, you are oxygenating the cannabinoids and the other chemicals that are in there. So while you may be vaporizing the cannabinoids that are immediately behind where the flame is, uh, you're also burning uh, the cannabinoids that are right at the junction there. So that smoked marijuana is not identical to vaporized marijuana. With the vaporized marijuana, all of the volatile oils will be volatilized by the time you get to 340 degrees centigrade. And you will have removed or be exposed to about 70% fewer irritants than when you smoke it. It also has a somewhat different odor. It doesn't have the characteristic classic burnt rope odor, but it has more of a nutty odor. Now, when you eat marijuana, you're going to have metabolized 85% of the cannabinoids. People who eat it talk about having a body high as opposed to a mind high, and that is because you're being exposed to a different combination of cannabinoids. Now, some people have found that an under-the-tongue spray, which is what Sativex is, Sativex is a alcohol extract of the whole plant which combines extracts from two plants, one that's high in THC for its therapeutic value, and the other that's high in CBD to keep down the euphoria, its anti-euphoria effect. And when you spray it under the tongue, it will be effective in about 15 minutes, but it will go to the brain first before going through uh, the liver. On the other hand, there are many people in Canada where Sativex is legal that find that they still prefer uh, cannabis uh, to uh, Sativex. Uh, now Sativex uh, is prescribed in Canada uh, and it appears as though the British government and or the Spanish government may also approve Sativex in the near future uh, for sale as a pharmaceutical in their country. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration found that Sativex, basically liquid marijuana, was safe enough to be tested on Americans. And they approved a phase three clinical study, phase three just means with human beings, in December of 2005 to determine whether or not this under the tongue tincture spray was useful in relieving intractable pain in people with cancer. This study did not get started until 2007 and is still ongoing. There have been numerous studies with cannabis and tincture of cannabis uh, and pain that have shown that it is useful in relieving pain. Now, we've talked about under the tongue, we've talked about smoking, we've talked about vaporization. There's also the synthetic Delta 9 THC can be taken orally, just like edibles can be taken. Uh, and the main problem with edibles is that it's hard to tell whether you're going to get a dose that is going to just deal with the therapeutic needs that you have, whether it's going to give you euphoria or whether it's going to give you dysphoria. And you need to have a regular supply so that you uh, can be fairly certain that you're going to take an amount that will be the therapeutic dose and not an amount that will give you uh, dysphoria as uh, a side effect. Lastly, the curanderos, who are lay healers in southern Mexico and Central America, have used tincture of cannabis as part of their uh, therapeutic armamentarium for at least 200 years. The topical application of tincture of cannabis is useful, particularly on the small joints, the fingers and toes, 
in dealing with pain associated with arthritis. And the reason for this is that cannabis is both an analgesic, a painkiller, and an anti-inflammatory. And we know this not only from the anecdotal uh, evidence that we have, but also from thousands of studies that have been done around the world, uh, with mainly with animals and sometimes in tissue culture. The International Cannabinoid Research Society has been around for about 20 years, and they have uh, conferences each year that last for three days in which researchers from all over the world uh, talk about the results that they have gotten uh, doing basic science uh, studies. With any drug that a doctor is considering recommending or prescribing, they need to balance off the therapeutic effects with the side effects. When you talk about the treatment of pain, for many people, the opiates are very effective painkillers. But for some people, the opiates cause confusion. Uh, they make it difficult for them to concentrate, difficult for them to drive. Uh, they don't enjoy playing with their kids or their grandkids. It causes them constipation. With cannabis, for many of those people, they find that it certainly does not give them constipation and does not cause them confusion, provides them with sufficient relief from their pain that they can go about their activities of daily living, they can drive their car without uh, interference, and more importantly, they can have fun. They can play with their children, they can play with their grandchildren. So I'm, I wouldn't necessarily say that across the board, uh, cannabis is to be used instead of opiates. But I would say that for many people it can be used instead of opiates and for others it can be used in conjunction with opiates and they can use a lower dose of the opiates and hopefully have fewer side effects. Now any therapeutic agent that we know of has some side effects and marijuana is no exception. The main side effect to the use of marijuana is from smoking it and that's cough. So that can be completely avoided by eating it or drinking it, and it can be largely avoided by vaporizing. One of the things that's talked about a lot is that you can have a panic reaction, and that is certainly possible. It most commonly occurs in people who are novice users, particularly if they've been exposed to a plant that is very high in THC. Another thing that uh, people sometimes have is paranoid thinking that uh, the police are after them. I've noticed that this is not nearly as common since it's become legal because the police aren't after them and so it may not be paranoia that people were experiencing but an exaggerated perception of reality. And one of the, sh the uh, things that we've lost as a result uh, of the propaganda and misinformation that has been spread about cannabis is the fact that it has legitimate therapeutic value and we have discouraged research. We have dramatically discouraged research in this country and numerous other countries including uh, England, uh, Israel, Spain, and Germany are far ahead of us in terms of uh, the quantity of research that they're doing on the medicinal value of cannabis and this is particularly alarming in these economic times when we certainly could use the economic stimulus, the economic boost that would come uh, from uh, having pharmaceutical cannabis available in this country uh, as it is now in Canada and as it possibly soon will be in England and Spain. Jefferson said that this country would be in dire straits if we had laws that interfered with what we put into our own bodies. Are we not in control of our own bodies. medicine that patients themselves can grow. For people with cancer who may be facing 
thinking about the end of their life to be able to grow 